morning guys today we start our uh, vlog off at a very busy junction in uh, Thailand as you can see we are not moving we want to go eat breakfast but it is not moving so we will sit here until it moves So we're walking to the, the restaurant now where apparently they sell some really good boat noodles and believe it or not this is where it's located right alongside this canal we can watch boats pass The noodles and there's a huge pork taste that we saw just now laid over on top and there's some fried pork lard and I think some fried shrimp. It's very cool. So here's what they're actually famous for. This is their regular boat noodles. As you can see, instead of the tom yum soup, we have umami soup. You can see the little um, pork pea. Hmm? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. You can see like the little um, pork particles just floating around. That usually indicates that it's gonna have a lot of umami. So after having our boat noodles and tom yam noodles, the next thing planned on our agenda for the day was to visit Hua Lam Fong Railway Station, aka Bangkok Railway Station, which is basically the former central passenger terminal and the former railway hub of Thailand. So it is historically significant. And prior to 2020, the station was also associated with the Eastern Oriental Express luxury trains and the International Express to Malaysia. So, following the opening of the Krung Tep Apiwa Central Terminal, the newer station that would be basically the one that comes after this one, the station was supposed to close in 2021 and convert to a museum. However, uh, people protested this change and instead they wanted the station to remain. So as it is currently, all long distance trains have moved to Krung Tep Apiwan. But ordinary and commuter trains still stop here. So there are a few reasons for us coming here today, but mainly it's because uh, I like trains. My dad wanted me to look at some trains because my birthday was coming up. So he thought, all right, one who loves trains will take him to see the station that uh, has an ambiguous closing date. We don't know when, but it might be good to see it, just in case it does. So with those facts in mind, we are here. So enjoy the view of the station. Let's go look around.
so Dan, continuing on with our train related uh, agenda for the day, we traveled over to Thornbury Railway Station and subsequently Thornbury Railway Depot, which is a railway depot that stores the five last steam locomotives that are still currently in operation and taken out for special events and purposes. So this here is the Thornbury Locomotive Garage and basically it's uh, where they keep well, the locomotives at. So basically if uh, there are any preserved steam engines or diesel engines, they will keep them here. And apparently we can just walk across and see them. So me being a train fan myself, I definitely will. So the thing about the Thornbury Locomotive Garage is that it is very much a very much operational, still active railway depot, which means trains from Thornbury Depot would actually go from Thornbury Railway Station all the way up to Kanchanaburi, so visitors and foreigners can visit uh, Kanchanaburi and subsequently the River Kwai. Honestly speaking, looking back on this video of that I took in the Thornbury Railway Depot, I'm not even sure if I was supposed to be there because it was mainly only just uh, the depot workers, the security guard who graciously let me in, and wow, I, 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 I'm still blown away by this experience, I'm gonna be real with you, but here are the engines. So among the engines here, they are all uh, of Japanese origin, whether they may be converted from existing Japanese National Railway locomotives or if they were exported from Japan for use in Thailand and Thailand only. But among them, there are two Mogos, two Sixos, two Pacifics, four Six Twos, and a Mikado, a 282. So here, coupled back to back, are number 824 and number 850, the two Pacifics that stay in this garage. These two engines are always seen back to back because, well, the state railways of Thailand have ripped up all their Ys and turntables. So because of that, the trains need to be back to back so they can go in either direction on a special occasions, such as the Orient Express services and the four days of the year, which include the State Railways of Thailand Anniversary, the Queen's Birthday, Chula Longhorn Day, and the King's Birthday. But since today wasn't any of those days, they are all here, being looked after by the various depot workers, and are just resting here until their next big day. So I've even been allowed to actually come into the cab of this stately Japanese locomotive. It's one of the best experiences in my life, actually. I am incredibly happy to be here. It's crazy to think that this is actually still a active railway site, which means that those diesels just now were not in preservation. They are, in fact, still in service. Which means the government is actually still taking care of diesel engines. They are preserving history, something I wish Malaysia would do. So present here today, we also had the two C-56s, number 713 and number 715, who I believe are the two engines that take special trains up to Kanchanaburi because they're still lightweight compared to the Pacific. So the thing about these C-56s is that they were built in Japan and sent over to various Asian countries occupied by Japan in World War II, and Thailand being no exception. However, after the war, these locomotives remained, and the C-56 class there are 12 of these in Thailand, whether it be in operating condition or on static display. It's crazy to think of how many of these still exist here in Thailand. Alright, with that out of the way, we are going to continue on our regular journey. You know, the moment we eat a lot of food. So this is Phai Thalu, and basically, they are really good at making pad thai, as you can tell by their proudly displayed Michelin uh, awards. So this is what we have here, we have Pantai Park. 
So let's see if there's some delicious looking bacon on top of our pot pie. So juicy and smoky. And this is the second one. Here is a shrimp pot pie. As you can see, there's shrimp instead of the pork. And in addition to that, you can actually see the noodles under here, so instead of them just covering pork, here you can see the bean sprouts, the noodles, the egg, the tofu. It looks simply marvelous. So here we are at the Era 1 Shrine, formerly the Tao Maha from Shrine. And inside the shrine houses the statue of the Thai representation of Brahma, the Hindu god of creation. And for some history that I plucked from the internet, the Era 1 Shrine was built in 1956 as part of the government owned Era 1 Hotel to eliminate the bad karma caused by laying the foundations on the wrong day. Uh, the hotel's construction was played with a bunch of uh, mishaps, including cost overruns, injuries, and well, an astrologer advised that a shrine should be built to negate um, these negative influences. And so, the statue was designed and built by the Department of Fine Arts and enshrined in 1956. Uh, the hotel apparently continued to go on as normal with its construction. So what After You is, it is basically a chain of dessert cafes around Thailand and Bangkok, mainly Bangkok though. But basically, they sell like these really over-the-top desserts and they're rated really well by the public. So yeah, as of recording, there are around 10 branches of these around Thailand. And of course, we definitely have to try something as good as this. So this here is a strawberry cheesecake kakidori and it's basically a shaved ice dish with obviously the strawberry on top. I don't know how they do it, I really don't understand how they do it, but look at the sauce. It's almost as if it's out of a drawing or a cartoon or a comic. It's a very very smooth line like drooping all around the side. I do not believe that this is natural. This is definitely the work of an artisan. So, if you look inside the strawberry cheesecake, kaki something, I don't know, there's actually a bunch of cheesecake in there. Shortcake. Who would have thought? A strawberry cheesecake shortcake? Well, it's called a cheesecake, so I assume it's a cheesecake. But yeah, they do give you more jam to pour onto the. I'm just calling it an ice cream. I don't have the dory. Kaki dory, that's gonna take. It's a mouthful, in fact. Japanese, you don't egg milk, whatever. Maybe. So next thing here is some Shibuya honey toast. So this is the toast. This sort of thing, uh, I think this is, you can get this in Japan, but it's like a really, really thick bread. 
And now here we have some butter, we have some uh, powdered sugar, two scoops of ice cream, and of course there's a bunch of whipped cream and nuts on the side. And yeah. We so we kind of just ate there for quite a bit, you know, we actually really did eat it very slowly and enjoying almost every single bite. And so we went down to go get dinner. And originally, we had wanted to try this store that was famous for selling noodles, instant noodles, in a way that, um, well, as you can tell, it's quite popular among the general public. Uh, so we couldn't. We had to go find somewhere else. So after finishing our dessert, we decided to come down to Boon Tat Street. Boon Tat Street is a street that's famous for all sorts of street food, whether it be in uh, stalls or proper restaurants. This entire street is filled to the brim with the awesome restaurant. to return to this restaurant it's called Uncle Mustache Steak you can't see it here but that's just a direct Google translation of the actual name my parents have eaten here before but I haven't so let's see what they have to offer first thing off is some uh, pork chop so on the pork chop we have some of course we have pork chop uh, french fries uh, butter on toast and some vegetables on the side Next thing here, we have the uh, basically a similar setup, except we have a... On this plate, we have pork ham steak. As you can see, there it is, with some uh, gravy on top too. And another thing we have is uh, some smoked pork sausages, or just a sausage. So here it is. And the last thing we have here is fish and chips. So here is the fish and chips with... Um, well, well, yeah, everything else is a similar setup. All of them have the same things here, uh, but they're toast french fries and the vegetables but of course here's our fish and chips so after finishing our uh, western food we have decided to eat another one this is called Pung Dip Pung Dip sells bread so let's just see what's so special about this bread so here is our selection so over here we have butter Hokkaido milk and Thai tea so here is everything. I think we should give this a try. So I think the first one we'll try is the Hokkaido milk. And let's see what's so special about this bread. You know? Yeah. This is good. The bread itself is like, as you saw just now, it's like it was like grilled. So it makes it like all charred up, very crispy. And the filling, Makes it even better. And with that, another successful day of adventuring around Bangkok. Tomorrow will be our final day in Bangkok. So I hope you tune in for the next episode. Goodbye!